Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Official Star Citizen updates from Cloud Imperium this week are pretty bare. There's no inside Star Citizen or Star Citizen Live. Disco Lando, the CIG employee that is typically in charge of all that, is relocating to the UK at the moment. However, we have had a new 3.17.0T open PTU patch and we're getting pretty close to a live release now for 3.17. I thought we'd go over that patch, look at the state of the PTU and what's holding up this live release because there are some quite powerful blocks which, if the sort of patch went live now, would not make for a great play experience. So that latest PTU patch made some changes. They tweaked injury triggers to be slightly more aggressive. Large hangers should no longer be missing collisions. Inner Thought should no longer interfere with the Talon 85X 890 Jump, their MFDs, their multifunction displays. Players should now be able to destroy AI Caterpillars and correctly receive mission credit. The Size 5 Torpedoes should no longer prematurely detonate before reaching max lock-on range. They fixed an issue that was causing mining gadgets to constantly blink with the red blinky blink uh, when not attached to a rock, which was actually quite funny. Uh, they fixed an issue where Mustang variants ran out of boost too quickly, and they fixed a client and a server crash. And there's also a server deadlock that was fixed and the Good Doctor map for Star Marine. Uh, there was a crash fix that they had for when you load in. Mining gadgets seem to be working pretty well from this current patch, though I have seen them fall through the floor when placed down or dropped on the floor uh, or when they detach from a mineable. But um, when you actually attach them and um, they can also uh, be like a meter or two away from the surface so it doesn't look great but they work they're functional cloud imperium have a feedback thread for mining gadgets at the moment and that's been getting some attention so please uh, chuck your feedback there for the mining gadgets but i wanted to read the dev response here hopefully in the next batch the red blinking um, should now only be active if the gadget detaches from a mineable including pressing the detach button to allow you to see if someone wants to steal them from your rock once you hold them in your hands or have them attached to the armor or backpack or lying in the showcase in the shop they will not blink red anymore uh, also we found an issue that might cause uh, the asteroids to not be scannable or mineable no promises yet but keep your fingers crossed in regards to balancing we are aware of the problems and are trying to get some work done between other tasks i really want to see a fix for scannable mineable uh, rocks and them working um, more appropriately uh, and not sort of like uh, disappearing or not being detected or, or showing up where they shouldn't be. It's also a bit of a shame that they're actually removing that red blinking light uh, from your back. Like, I like the idea of being able to toggle the red blinking light on and off on the mining gadgets freely um, because then I can play an FPS tag capture game with them. I think that would be great. They're great little gadgets for, for silly things like that. Now, I also want to talk about the testing focus for 3.17 because it's actually quite extensive here and there's been a few bits and pieces that Cloud Imperium have outlined here which are quite important. So, 3.17 contains new streaming changes that we're testing on the PTU and players may experience infinite loading or very long loading times along with possible missing assets in games such as elevators or ships not streaming in. We're updating and fixing these issues as we find them and each new build will hopefully address these more and more. So, infinite loading screens, super long uh, load times for assets and elevators, things making the game not accessible so you can't leave zones and stuff like that, that needs to be fixed. That is so essential that they are plowing through that. Uh, ship positional desync test. In 3.17, we've put in a networking update that should reduce ship to ship desync. We would like to know how well this update works and if there's any observable knock-ons. So we actually already knew this, but uh, it does go on. Relative to 3.16, you should feel as though you're the facing direction and position of other players' ships are much more accurate and real-time. We have created a feedback thread. Go check that out. Um, and they expect things like jittering, rubber banding, and other effects of that nature um, that they want you to report on and talk about. So... Due to recent improvements on desync, we have uncovered hit reg bugs which we likely cannot resolve in 3.17. In the direction of the velocity vector, the collision shape of the ship will be slightly in front of the visual model. The exact offset is velocity dependent. There is currently no workaround, so avoid hovering inside the velocity vector of another ship and lead your shots a bit more during combat. So that is going to be how you fight in Star Citizen in 3.17 it seems, and um, you have to aim slightly ahead of where you are expecting to actually normally hit a ship. And don't get too close 
to a ship because they might not be exactly where they appear to be. Uh, the other sort of testing focused things are the Hull A, which actually seems to be working pretty well, uh, the Lawville uh, Hospital and the Space Station Clinics, uh, the River on Microtech, the coffee shop vendor, ship to ship refueling with the Starfarer, mining gadgets, shopping and selling updates, ship and ship component inventory updates, player injury updates, and DNA head texture updates as well. Testing is in full swing and it's a bit of a mixed bag. The patch seems relatively stable for me. When I've jumped in, I don't get many crashes, um, I haven't had many 30Ks, but in fact there are still some, it's not ideal. There are various known issues and accessibility problems, however, that do need to be addressed. Um, the currently listed known issues are mining extraction lasers can pick up more shards than they can collect at once, and they can cause them all to f f like be thrown around and collide. They've still got the turret acceleration changes that they had made uh, during the PTU. They've reverted all those back at the moment, and uh, they might bring them back. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, players cannot buy components directly to ship storage yet. This is going to be coming later in the PTU cycle, apparently. AR markers are present when opening the mobile glass, which can make it hard to read. Ships can explode after players exit them. Many mineable asteroids can't be scanned. And still, the Valkyrie doesn't like being docked with the Starfarer in regards to fueling. Attempting to log back into a shipbed may cause you to have an infinite loading screen uh, or have a 30k error. Equipment in inventory doesn't equip properly to character and bounces back into your inventory, which is really annoying. Ship retrieval can time out and place the ships in a claim state. AI combat ships can jitter during PvE combat. Again, not great. Uh, equipment loadouts stuck and remain highlighted grey sometimes. Items do not immediately transfer from loot crates to personal inventory. So, there also appears to be issues with missions and bounties not activating or showing up correctly, which would be what I would want the priority for fixing to be on. I've also had bunker missions not spawn NPCs or immediately having those bunker missions complete when I turn up. There appears to be increased desync and hit reg issues currently, and... <laughs> That seems to sort of be exacerbating each other. Cloud and Pyram have said that the hit reg issues are unlikely going to be resolved for 3.17. However, in my opinion, they do need to get desync, uh, rubber banding, and jankiness in good order before a live build. I don't want to have to be fighting uh, bounties and PvE combat stuff with, with ships and them to be janking around all over the place. That feels like we're a step backwards. Uh, this all combined with fiddly and slow inventories can be all pretty stressful. Hopefully Cloud Imperium have uh, enough test info and solutions already in the work to get a 3.17 live build out in a good state. We don't want to be in a state where we have less accessibility to content than a previous patch. Alpha 3.17 actually has quite a bit of content in it and the PTU phase has already been pretty long. I still think Clan Imperium are pushing for a live build this week, and if possible, but it is going to be entirely dependent on how many blockers there are for 3.17 and how devastating or bad those blockers are, how much accessibility to get to the game if they release it now, because if they release and there's too many blockers and the game's not very playable, that would be foolish to release in my opinion. Anyway, what do you think? Have you been playing in 3.17 Open PTU? What are your experiences? Do you think we'll see a 3.17 live build soon? And then maybe Cloud Imperium will release a 3.17.1 patch um, or hotfixes quickly afterwards to solve those issues. Is that the sort of um, sort of release cycle that you prefer? Them just to push ahead to quickly get those builds out and then fix afterwards? Do you like the 3.17 additions in the patch with the river, coffee vendor, refueling, looting and selling, and mining gadgets and more? What do you think of all of that? What do you think of the, the new hospital and uh, the sort of new modular clinics? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I was feeling tired and sluggish. I found out that I was allergic to adverts and malware in 2022, which means I can't use the internet if only there was a service that could help. Wait! There is NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. It's NordVPN that I use, and it blasts away a load of my advert and malware-based concerns while allowing me to freely explore the internet. Maybe I want to be in the USA today and pretend that I'm an American. W what's this? Now I'm down under in the Australias? Wait, now I'm in the UK. Okay, I, I live there. That is less impressive. NordVPN has done so much for me. Sign up with the links below or go to NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer.
every month we have a ship giveaway. For April 2022, we're giving away an Origin 400i. It's a luxury exploration and touring ship, which will be great for a small crew wishing to explore the stars or try out a multitude of other gameplay. It's like a little yacht in space, a little piece of luxury. All you need to do to be in for a chance to win that is comment on any of my videos made during April 2022. More details in the description below. If you wish to further support the channel, consider clicking the join button under my videos to become a channel member or even become a Patreon. That goes a massive way in helping with our day-to-day -day videos and gives you a variety of little exclusives as well. But it should just make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Join today! Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if so inclined. And I'll see you in the verse.